Alfred, what are you doing? Oh, hey, hip, yo. <laughs> Look at my new keyboard. It's like the best keyboard on TikTok. From TikTok? Yeah. Wait, what keyboard did you buy? It's a high ground. No, you did not just spend $135 on a keyboard from TikTok, right? Wait, you're saying I could have saved $100? What do you mean? What? I bought the new one. No. Yeah. Alfred, no, that's a waste of your money. No, no, no. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. It wasn't my money. I used your credit card. No! This story starts with a keyboard that TikTok thinks is the best gaming keyboard ever? I kinda wanna know why. I tried the new high ground keyboard so you don't have to. Why, so you don't have to? Well, a lot of people say this is the best keyboard on TikTok, but we're not on TikTok, we're in the real world. And wait, why are they charging $235 for it? Hold on, let me just grab my wallet real fast, uh, spend $300 real fast, and howdy hey, I'm Hippiotech, and I try keyboards so you don't have to. And in my quest to find some of the best gaming keyboards, high ground always comes up as an option that I never consider. Now, I've looked at their keyboards in the past, and let's just say I've been a little bit... If you did a tiny bit of market research... Did I mention it was hot swappable? Did I mention it was orange... Mean. But like a movie studio that doesn't want to throw away their script, I believe in redemption arcs, and I've been told that High Ground has been making their keyboards better and better. So of course, right as I was going to make this video on their Skystone keyboard, which is the one everybody says is really good, what is this? Wait, they're making another one? And it's way more expensive? Okay, let's just put a pin in that for later. In this video, I'm going to be trying two High Ground keyboards at two very different prices to see if they're worth it, or maybe just a scam. So first, we're gonna be starting with the cheaper keyboard, the $135 Skystone Base 65. Don't worry, we're still gonna be looking at the aluminum board that for some reason they decided is worth $100 more. Now, if you're not into the world of keyboards, let me give you a little bit of backstory as you're probably very confused. High Ground is a brand that makes hype beast gamer stuff. It's also owned by 100 Thieves, the esports company by Nadeshot. Now, I was a little bit unfair when I looked at their past keyboards, as all they put focus on was marketing. As a marketing major, Hippio Tech, that kind of annoyed me. Speaking of marketing, all they've been doing is marketing this stuff on TikTok because of TikTok Shop. So every time I swipe on my feed trying to see a girl in a bikini, I mean content, I end up seeing these keyboards, and kids saying they're the best. Now, I look at custom keyboards and budget keyboards, and I'm always putting a focus on what's a great value for people. So when I saw that this keyboard started at $135, I thought, that's probably not a great value, right? But considering it goes on sale for like 87, that does make it a bit more interesting. And I edited that part in because I didn't know it was going on sale when I bought it originally. Now at first glance, this keyboard is unapologetically plastic. You've got the plastic keycaps, the plastic case, and you're probably wondering how is this premium? Well, if you haven't already been slapped in the face by High Ground's branding, there you go. Now, High Ground does do some amazingly cool anime collabs and Pokemon stuff, and I really like the aesthetic of those boards. But I think I remember something about not being able to put lipstick on a pig or something like that. Or maybe it's you can't put topographical maps on a $30 keyboard. Needless to say, their keycaps are their biggest selling point, but I personally have a few gripes. The first being the side or the front facing legends that kind of just have maps running through them haphazardly. I know this is completely subjective, but it's just not something I prefer. I just figured something out. You know why High Ground's slogo, slogo? <laughs> slogan is looks better from up here? That's because their keyboards from the front look really gross with all this front text. But when you're looking at them from above, it looks better <laughs> from up here. Now, in the past, when I was looking at High Ground keyboards, they really put a focus on things being orange. And I mean, come on, I can see why. You've got an orange PCB, orange silicone weight, but I think in the newer builds, they've actually put a focus on making their keyboards better because the switches in this are very nice. These are TTC linear switches and sorry tactile or clicky gang, there just aren't options for you. They call them the light flame switches and they say that high ground co-designed them. So I'm gonna have to believe them on that. And honestly, I don't have many gripes on these. I think TTC makes some great switches. I know Akko's used their switches in the past and the factory lubing here is pretty good. And you're probably thinking, well, Hippio, what's really bad about this thing so far? And don't worry, I'll share my thoughts on that soon. 
Now, if you're an RGB fan, the RGB here is a great touch. However, the north facing LEDs are pretty cringe. But like, for some reason, I can't figure out how to get the underglow working. Like, obviously the underglow works, right? Wait, there's no underglow? Why would you have a clear case, which you can clearly see doesn't have any RGB underglow? I know it's like a weird gripe and that's the, probably the silicone blocking it out anyways, but like, why would you make the case clear? This just kind of feels like a toy, a gamer toy. Don't take that out of context. But you're probably thinking, Hippio, is the keyboard garbage? It's trash, right? High ground made it. It's, it's terrible, right? I read a lot online about this keyboard being trash and high ground keyboards being garbage, but first impressions of this thing? I mean, it's decently lightweight, so if you traveled to competitions or something, maybe that would be good. If I got this keyboard and I was just your average person, this would be a pretty decent keyboard. But then when you factor in the price and the things you could get instead, that's where it gets a little bit more interesting. And I think there's a couple features missing. Like there's no wireless. And honestly, if you care a lot about RGB, you probably want something with shine through. On top of that, I feel like literally when you get this thing, all you're getting that's unique is the keycaps. If you really like high grounds aesthetic, that is one thing that they do super well. But maybe this keyboard is gonna be best if you mod it. Well, as far as modability goes, the fact that this thing is hot swap is actually really great. You just have to remove a couple of the keycaps to take the thing apart, which that's fine. I've definitely seen much worse. However, because of the north facing LEDs, it definitely limits what switch and keycap combos you could use with this case. Although, I mean, if you're buying a high ground keyboard, you're probably buying it for the keycaps, right? Right? But would you even need to mod this? They covered a lot of the basic bases here, which kind of left me wondering, why does it feel so lackluster? And part of that, I kind of boil down to the aluminum plate. It's just kind of amplifying all of the rough, sharper sounds in a case where you'd wanna be optimizing for deeper sounds. So they're kind of just fighting themselves here. The stabilizers, the LEDs are fine. The switches are fine. But Hippio, what about the feel? Does it feel good? N no, yes, maybe. It's not gasket mounted, so you're not gonna get any of that nice bouncy flex and your general typing experience is gonna be fine. Just Fine. Ooh, yeah. Huh? Now, similar to what we did with the first high ground keyboards, let's tackle their marketing and see what wild claims they made with this one. Are they being honest? On their website, they call it easy to customize and hot swap. Mostly, you have to take off keycaps to customize it. That's fine. I'll give them one point. Weighted feel and thock. It feels really light. Thock, spelt with two C's. You have way too many sharp high-end sounds in there. Here's where it gets kind of funny because they say it has a durable plate and enhanced acoustics. The aluminum plate, it is durable. They got that going for them. But I think that actually makes the acoustics a lot worse, but that is totally subjective. That's fair. Honestly, if you got this thing, you wouldn't be disappointed, but you know what might make you disappointed is if you spent a hundred dollars more for an aluminum version. Woohoo, yeah. Now, as I said before, after I had bought the first keyboard, we got the announcement for the second and immediately I had to buy it. To their credit, it was in stock. So after a short while it arrived, but there's gonna be a couple things we need to look at. Some things that we're gonna be looking for as we check this out. On the website, they say it's a flagship 65% keyboard with die sub PVT keycaps, full CNC aluminum case, a gasket mounted design. We're gonna be testing that, remember that. And Dreamland, <laughs> Dreamland, linear switches. They say the new upgrades are an improved gasket feel, triple dampening foam, and an FR4 flex cut plate. So they fixed the aluminum from my last gripe. Okay, they have screw and stabilizers, that's a plus. Let's go high ground. How many years did it take? Okay, that's fine. Durable plate and enhanced acoustics. They copy pasted that from the aluminum one. <laughs> Come on guys. Now, obviously high ground is really good at marketing, but are they really good at making an enthusiast grade keyboard? Maybe this thing will be incredible. I don't know. Maybe high ground, I'm gonna make a, a high ground apology video and it's gonna be like, I was wrong. High ground was the best keyboard ever. Who knows, maybe that's gonna be my apology video. Stay tuned. How long is this video? Ooh, ooh, yeah, uh, 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 uh. Now, with all of my thoughts about the marketing out of the way, let's keep those at the back of our minds as we go through the unboxing. The unboxing for this board was already a tinge more premium. We've got an NFT, please don't screenshot. We've got another NFT, 
please don't screenshot. And that's remarkably heavy. Oh, wait, that's kind of sounding like a Minecraft blacksmith anvil. Um, uh, I'll set that to the side. Huh. You like my Minecraft villager impression? Well, this is a switch puller, and this is a screwdriver built into a keycap puller. I figured it out later. That's actually pretty cool. This is a great touch for any keyboard, as most people don't have weird bits on their screwdrivers, so if you want to take your keyboard apart, you're going to need this. There's also a braided USB-C cable, which I was a little bit disappointed to see the ends of were plastic, but it is pretty standard, so I'll give them that. Similar to me showing up to a date in a suit, the first impressions were good, but uh, once you got a little bit deeper, things got more interesting. The case has this really angular mountainous look and I really like the engraved mountain in the back. And obviously the keycaps are the same standard high ground keycaps. Yup. I feel like if you're making like a super premium keyboard then maybe like people will know how to touch type. So I'd love to see them get a little bit bold with just a pure topographic design. As far as the aluminum goes, it's a little bit anvil -y. I don't think this is made with like 6063 premium hyper grade Star Wars level aluminum. However, there is a way that we can fix that, which I'll be showing you later in this video. Well, we can't actually fix the aluminum that they chose for the board, but we can fix some of the errors that it causes. And overall, comparing this to the Skystone, this is a more premium keyboard. So the price increase does seem valid here, but it's to the extent that they've increased the price that it gets a bit questionable, especially if you consider the discounted price of the Skystone, but we'll talk about that later. But let's take off the keycaps and let's take a look at the Dreamland linear switches. Are, aren't you just dreaming? Also, editor Hippio note, literally as I was filming this, they dropped the price of this keyboard to $188 on sale. Still $100 more than the other one though, so that part still holds. The keycaps are of the same exact quality as their other keyboards, so they're not the best die sub quality. And they do actually have a bare bones version of this keyboard for $132. So if you didn't like their keycaps and wanted this aesthetic for some reason, you could get that. As of recording the voiceover, I couldn't really find much info on these Dreamland linear switches other than the fact that they are Dreamland linear switches. So if I find anything else, I'll put it on screen, but these are perfectly fine and wait, is that what I think it is? They finally did it! South facing LEDs! A round of applause! Congratulations, you finally made the most simple change. You also notice PE foam on the PCB as well as screw and stabilizers, which are a great touch. Now these switches do feel like very nice linear switches, so they've got that going for them, which is nice. However, there's nothing that makes them feel any better than any of the other high ground switches that I've tried, so yeah. On top of that, the gasket performance that they talk about is unexistent. Like literally you get more flex on their board that isn't gasket mounted than you do on this. I know gaskets are supposed to do a little bit more than just add flex, but uh, there's no flex. Okay, but surely this keyboard at least sounds incredibly premium, right? They've got the aluminum case, they've got the three layers of foam. So before we get crazy and open this thing up, let me show you a sound test and you let me know what you think. You still hear quite a lot of ping. What is the foam doing? This is 235 US dollar -y dues? What? It is one whole Skystone keyboard more expensive though? Do I think it feels premium? Not really still. You get quite a lot of case ping. It's a keyboard. It's pretty good even, but is it $235 worth of keyboard? But you're probably wondering, well, Hippio, what if I mod it? What if I take this keyboard apart and do a couple things to it? Well, don't worry, I've got you covered. Let's open it, let's open it. And this part is actually super worth watching because in just a couple minutes with just a couple dollars, I can make this keyboard sound a lot better. And that's because they cut a couple corners with their manufacturing. Anytime that you have cheap pieces of aluminum and have metal on metal contact, then you're gonna get some ping. So we're gonna be deploying my good friend, the Force Break mod. And no, I have no idea why it's called that. Uh, no idea. I'm only gonna force break, force, force break your heart. Taking apart this keyboard, super easy. Just remove a couple keycaps and bing bong, you've got access to the screws. Then with a little bit of movie magic, we unscrew it with our wow stick and the top plate comes right off. Now the mod that I'm gonna be doing is something that they definitely could have done at the factory, albeit hopefully less janky. Opening this thing up does reveal the dampening foam and it does reveal the tuning fork of a top plate. And it also reveals all of the places where metal on metal contact could potentially be made. 
In this case, I had my editor take a bunch of painter's tape, and in typical hazing activities, I had them force break this keyboard. This is essentially where you take tape or some type of foam, and you put it on all of the spots where it's going to make metal on metal contact. I'm not sure we did this entirely perfectly, but as you'll see in the final result, it will greatly improve the sound. Now, the feel, we can't really do that much about that. They used sock gaskets, which is great, but the gaskets are just not very flexy whatsoever. So I'm just going to put a layer of tape on the back of the keyboard and bada bing bada boom. I'll give you my final sound test at the end, but it was time to figure out, is this thing actually worth it? Or are these high ground keyboards worth it at all? And that's where it gets a little bit more interesting. I'm going to be honest, guys. I think I like the cheaper one more. Like the actual typing experience on these switches just feels a little bit better and I'm not quite sure why. And then the sound, totally subjective, but I actually prefer it on the cheaper Skystone board. The ping from the aluminum just is not coming through in a premium way whatsoever. So what are my final thoughts on this thing? Is it worth $235? Frankly, that's for you to decide. Honestly, this keyboard is fine and maybe even pretty good, but for the price, you're kind of left wondering why? Like, it's missing wireless, it's missing a fancy weight, and if I was buying cheap aluminum, I would expect it to be $89. Now, there are other keyboards slightly more affordable. In fact, I've even seen them go on sale for as cheap as 90 bucks on TikTok, and I do think that people calling them trash is a little bit detractive because I think they're still fine keyboards, and ultimately, keyboards come down to preference, so as much as I hate it, you could really like them, but ultimately, what do I think for high ground? I think you guys just need to keep working on it. Maybe three or five years of iterations and you'll finally have a keyboard that was really, really, really great like two years ago. Maybe make them cheaper and maybe stop marketing to kids on TikTok. Like it's the only thing you do, please. I can't, I'm a marketing major and it's a big L. Out of all of the keyboards, this is definitely one of them. Howdy, hey, I'm Hippiotech. And you're probably thinking, wow, Hippio. You look so handsome today. And that's because I've got my Howdy Hey shirt on. Check this out. If you also want a Howdy Hey shirt, or maybe you're a hoodie person or a hat person, I just launched my new line of merch. And you can check it out for a limited time at the link down below. You can also click the shop button. Everyone that buys one has a small chance of getting a special personal thank you and Howdy Hey from me. Links down below. Howdy Hey, Howdy Hey, Howdy Hey.